Hello, welcome to another episode of the Crafts Couch Pod. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about my recent bout of burnout. Burnout that I was kind of aware of, (laughs) somewhat aware of, until I really looked at it and it was reflected back to me that it became pretty evident. And gosh, I find it so helpful to be in my own personal containers because it's always the things that are just right under the surface that are right there that are keeping you stuck. And you can know all the things, (laughs) you can learn all the things, but still be stuck by your own shit. So today I want to talk a little bit about burnout and this recent clarity of the energy around space. So last year, now it's like hindsight's 2020, right? Total clarity. Last year, I was doing a lot of force, I would say, in my business. And force around what I thought I had to be or had to do. And I've talked a little bit about this, how, you know, I started off this journey really creating a lot of mental health content. And then I went into the point of view conclusion, not a question (laughs) that I needed to be a business coach to be successful. And I remember the exact time frame. This was like January, 2021. I need to be a business coach to be successful. And to me, it made a lot of sense, right? I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. Usually those are the folks that are coming to me. And when I went into that, then I was really, really focused outside of myself for the information I did not have, for how other people were doing it, for how other people were doing it right, the right successful way, whatever that is. And although I really continue to look for people that would bring me back to myself, I still was finding myself in this kind of mm, saying I was focused on my intuition and returning me back to me while simultaneously trying to implement what other people were doing. Now, I know that within business or whenever we're creating something, we are certainly inspired by others, right? And there are really only so many ways, so many things you can create, right? I would say, or like sell things. Offers, maybe it's infinitely possible, whatever you could create, but there's just kind of really only so many ways to do things. And I just got that my attention was so focused outside of myself while simultaneously seeking to return me back to me. (laughs) And it wasn't until it started to become painful, the money started to contract that it started to get my attention, right? It, It wasn't before that. I was like, I have the energy. I can do this. I can learn all the things and I will muscle through it. And I will say that skill from being an ex ballet dancer of being able to show up through it all injuries, sick or whatever you know, has continued on into my adult life, right? Just muscle through it, that masculine energy, muscle through it. So I recognized when the money started to contract, that that's really what got my attention, right? It wasn't the pain. It wasn't the stress in my neck. It wasn't feeling more down and frustrated. It was the money. And isn't it always these things that get our attention? So I was very aware of it, but was kind of like, what does it take to change this? (laughs) Aware that something wasn't working, but not quite sure what wasn't working. And it wasn't until I realized that I was really also coming from the point of view that life is valuable when it's hard, no pain, no gain. You know, it takes a lot of hard work and that's the only things that are valuable. And money only comes from a lot of hard work and ties to my business. And I recognized, well, that is simply not true. And also not the belief system I want to function from. Because if I am functioning from that point of view, I literally have to experience that in my reality, right? If I've decided, if I've concluded, I'm basically affirming it to myself to be true. And then 
my mind will reflect that back to me and I'll co-create that amazing hardship in the universe. How does it get better than that? So once I started recognizing I was doing this and this, I can't even tell you. I mean, it's like the awareness level goes so deep because I had some conscious awareness of it, but not totally. And so I finally got tired of it, (laughs) tired of that and got down to business. What else is possible here? What could I choose that would change this? And I started to look at what used to be ease for me. So ease that I thought everyone knew it. I thought everyone knew it. Well, everyone knows nervous system regulation, right? Everyone knows the EFT tapping. Everyone knows subconscious reprogramming. And I started to chat about it more and was getting feedback that no, not everyone knows it. And no one knows it the way I know it right? We each have a very specific vibration, point of view about things that just needs to be said. But for some reason, it kind of went along with my belief that life needs to be hard to be valuable, that this is too easy. This is too easy. Everyone already knows this. I'm not saying anything interesting. I'm not saying anything helpful. I can't be successful this way, right? All of those points of view, I have to choose something really hard and that I'm new at to, to be successful or whatever that is. And so I started to shift gears again. And if you are an entrepreneur or if you're in business, this is just part of the journey. It's like the constant pivot, change, choose, start, stop, change, start, stop, just over and over and over again. And so I started to create you know, back to kind of my roots, the mental health roots. Okay, well, what what do I want to create now? Because I couldn't create the same way I was before. I had to choose something different. And so I just started to start off, I just started off really simply with, okay, I'm just going to start talking about the nervous system again. Okay, I'm just going to start talking about subconscious reprogramming. And all of a sudden, people were pinged. People were interested. Tell me more. What do you mean by this? And when I start to get questions from people, it really clarified, oh, okay, this is what people don't know. This is the connections they really need to make at the basic level. Because to me, mastering the basics is what will completely change your life. And yet we're always off looking for the shiny new hard thing like I was and not going through the basics. So I started to talk more about it and found that I was gaining clarity on what was really easy for me. And I recognized for what purpose am I choosing this to be difficult? For what purpose am I choosing for content, for my business to be really hard? What if I created the most simplest thing for me to choose. And that's actually where the nervous system sanctuary was born. So the nervous system sanctuary is my subscription service where I guide folks through nervous system regulation and subconscious reprogramming in the moment. So once a week I show up and I Initially, when I was creating this, I was still coming from the old points of view of like, well, because it's like at this price, so I should pre-record it and then do this and do that. And it's like, what would be easy? And I'm like, what would be easy is for me to show up every week and do it live with folks. And that's what's easy for now, right? Maybe it'll change in the future, but right now that's what's fun and easy and creating so much, oh my gosh, to connect with everyone once a week, co-regulate, have these amazing clarifying moments and so much positive biofeedback that everyone's having. It's just such a gift. And I was like, that is ease. That's what I want my life and my business to be easy, easy, show up, create, show up, create. And so I recognized that I was starting to really lean into this more feminine, organic approach to creating. Although in the past I had done more kind of organic classes, the year that I decided I was a serious business coach, I went into, well, I need to do it very structured and determine access levels and then also do teaching programs and just got all so serious about it. 
And although there's a time and place for those, because I do appreciate those myself as well, it was just not the vibe, right? And so I was getting that. I was choosing a lot of things that were not aligned with what lights me up. So to me, burnout is a combination of things, a combination of choosing too many things that are soul draining and not choosing enough things that are soul fulfilling, right? Now, of course, in our day-to-day life, not everything may be soul fulfilling unless you can perceive it that way. Maybe you hate cleaning the house. That's cool. You could hire someone, right? What else is possible? But not doing enough of the things that light you up because you only have so much energy in a day. You really do physically. With the physical body, you have so much energy. So where you allocate it is really important. And so as I started to get clear on what I wanted to create that way, there was still some muddiness, I would say, in my clarity, my awareness, and what I was tapping into. And I was starting to recognize that I, wow, am consuming so, 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 so much information, right? I was just kind of like priding myself on that masculine energy of do, do, do. And look, I'm taking a bath and tapping and listening to a course that I'm learning about. Like I'm doing all the things. See, I'm a good girl and really focusing on that energy. And I recognized how draining that was becoming when I was finding myself, you know, obsessively checking my phone or checking social media, or how is this person doing it? How is this person doing it? Like needing to figure it out when really what I required was space. (laughs) So it was offered, recommended to me to try a silence practice, if you will, to sit in silence for 30 minutes, no active meditating, No active breath work, no listening to binaural beats or a podcast, no doing anything, just sitting. And I thought, well, at least maybe I'll just sit in the bath and do that. (laughs) I can't just sit on the couch. Let me sit in the bath and do this. So the first time I did it, the first 10 minutes were really freaking annoying. I can't even tell you. It was so annoying. I was like, what am I doing? This is a waste of time. That's what went through my head. This is a waste of time. And, you know, what am I accomplishing here? Then the second 10 minutes, I could not keep my eyes open. I literally just wanted to fall asleep. And I think I did a little bit. And then the last 10 minutes, I wasn't tracking my time. I just kind of, this is averaging. The last third, I'll say, I was now in the flow. I was in a groove. I felt alert, but relaxed and open and receptive. And... I recognize despite even how much I teach about nervous system work, there still is more to learn. There's always more to learn, right? And so even in that moment, I was experiencing what I tell folks is like kind of the light switch effect where you're either on or you're off. You're like, go, 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 or you're off, right? I just needed to fall asleep when I'm trying to regulate versus being the dimmer switch. And so this is something that we're constantly seeking at attaining, right? This is a hygiene practice, a lifestyle practice. This isn't like, I did a breath work once last year on vacation and now I'm good. No, it requires practice daily work. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm I'm active, I'm moving, I'm doing breath work, I tap, blah, blah, blah. This is enough. But to me, what was actually required for my nervous system was the space, was the space for clarity, the information, my intuitive knowing to drop in. And if we are not allowing there to be space, it can't come in, right? If you're constantly filling your time with more learning or um, more doing, then you don't find yourself in the receiving mode, right? So the whole idea with any sort of thing that we are creating is, yes, we put the intention out there that we want to create this thing, and then we got to pull our attention off it, right? Because if we are the stage five clinger, (laughs) 
going to repel it. We're going to repel it. And for me, the actualization and manifestation that I was seeking to create was, well, a soul fulfilling business that feels really good for me. That's also wildly abundant and just feels really good. Right. And Although I was able to kind of pull out a lot of different creations last year, it just, it didn't feel ease. And so I basically kind of made the demand of myself in 2023, okay, I'm getting back to what's easy, what's fun, what feels magical, and just all the things that I've kind of resisted being, you know, especially going through a doctoral program that's stuffy and all about research and then figuring out that was not really me and hiding all my, uh, you know, alternative beliefs about healing and transformation for so long, I recognize that that was really doing me a disservice by not really leaning into what is true for me. And so even last year, as I've kind of exposed more of that and been more willing to share it, there was still like a need to, to do it like others, to, to try to find others who were, you know, maybe talking about that too, but be like them. And I recognized that at this place and time, I just needed to take space, take space to get more clarity on truly what is coming from within. So for me, pragmatically, that looked like first kind of looking at my schedule my schedule in general, and looking at my calendar, and looking at things that were just no longer lighting me up. And so when I share things like, okay, follow what is light is true for you, and what's heavy is a lie, I encourage you to, especially if you're burnt out right now, to really cut out even the things that are like, "Mm, that's fun, but mm," right, you're just a little flat about it, or it's not a hundred percent full body. Yes. Right. In order, when we're in recovery mode, it's like needing to 86, those things. So if things weren't a full hundred percent, yes, I'm fully behind this, then it was cut out. So I cut things out of my schedule. I started to look at, you know, my overall business and all the offers. And it's like, I have a ton of things going on. So I'm in the process of simplifying that, really just simplifying down to the few things that really light me up. Now, when you first start, you try a bunch of things, right? You try to get clarity. That's what gives you awareness is choosing a lot of different things, kind of throwing the spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks. And then when you have the space to have more clarity, there's less need to throw so much quantity out there because you are more clear on where the energy is going, right? You may always have the pings towards what you're aware of, but the clarity in the intuitive messages is just so much more potent when you have the space. So to me, it also looks like what other ways can I create space in my day? Well, that would mean not consuming so much, not consuming so much social media, not consuming so many um, learning podcasts or I mean like that, like different courses, things like that. And really dialing it back to just the few folks that I kind of want to tune into and, and when I'm pinged to be really mindful of each moment. So for example, even today I was creating some content. It's been really icy here in Texas. And so I couldn't go to my normal class because they're closed. So I was walking on my walking pad and creating some content on my treadmill, skin some movement in, and then was off to create breakfast. Now, normally I would put on something to learn. I need to learn while I'm cooking breakfast. I can't just make breakfast. And I intentionally chose silence, leave my phone at the other end of the island and make breakfast without any of that. So although I was looking at, you know, completely like abstaining from certain things like social media or whatever for a period of time, I found myself going into resistance. So I wanted to do something that was really doable just for where I'm at right now. In the future, I may be ready for that. (laughs) But right now I'm in a place of, okay, what could I do to intentionally just create more space in my day? 
I was even looking at where else I was feeling this doing need, right? So besides the fact that I was coming from the presupposition that, you know, life is only valuable from hard work, I was only, I was also coming from this belief that money only comes from my business. Money can only come from my business. And so if you have that belief, then, so you're, so you're right. And so to me, I was functioning from a place of, well, every waking second, if I would go into any scarcity, then I should be doing something for my business. I should be creating, creating another offer, creating, right? More, more, more. I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, there's just, you, there's always more that you could do. There's always more ideas you could implement and more you could choose. And as I started to unravel, and I get this will be like a whole other episode, <laughs> unraveling the business um, and money and where money comes from. As I was starting to unravel that and recognize and allow money to come from all sorts of places, then I could relax, right? Which is actually the vibration of money. (laughs) Space, relaxation, right? What does money give you but space in surroundings, a bigger house, luxury, you know, car or first class airline ticket, right? It affords you space, along with the space that comes with relaxation. And so when you can start to see things like, for example, in this example, making money can be any sort of activity because it's related more to your vibration, then what else is possible? Basically, I allowed myself the space. So for example, Today, I have a a very spacious day. I didn't have any appointments. I could just create. And one thing that I've been putting off is, you know, cleaning the house. And before I've gone into a lot of masculine resistance, like I should hire someone. That's what entrepreneurs do because I need more time for business. And then I started to look at that today and my point of view. And I thought, well, what if I made cleaning a money-making activity in the sense of what if I was changing my vibration by cleaning the house, creating space, not forcing, putting on some music, just having fun, right? Anything that helps me to feel good, that is going to be a money-making activity, right? Because then I'm in the receptive mode. Then the the inspired downloads come, the great information comes, right? That you could create something with total ease. So, wow. I feel like there is a lot to this, maybe more than I even recognized going into this episode to break down. So if you were able to follow, bravo. I am seeking to share this information more in real time, more like kind of while I'm in the middle of it. And and I am, I'm like kind of coming out the other end of this burnout and getting clarity. So some of this stuff is me figuring it out, right? As I'm talking, talking through it. So I hope this was helpful. And if there's anything that you want me to chat about, you can feel free to email support at craftscouch.com. Um, I would love to chat about it more on the podcast or create content around it. And in the meantime, if you are feeling called to more space having spaciousness days. I would love to have you in my beta mastermind that is starting very soon. I've basically created this organic feminine container following the energy of creating more space because I am just getting so much awareness around wanting to create in this day or create in this way and have space in my life because it has been such a gift. So I'm looking to extrapolate that concept so much further in that container. Um, So if you are feeling called, the link is in the notes to apply and I would love to have you. All right. Until next time.